Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Roper. I hope everyone had a really nice Easter break. So this first review activity, uh, we're actually starting a new unit um, called Cycles. Um, the first cycle we're gonna learn about is the water cycle. And this is pretty much a review. I'm pretty sure you studied a little bit about this last year in fifth grade. So after you take your notes, I want you to watch this video and I'm gonna show you, give you some little bit of um, review information about the water cycle, how it works. And then I'll show you some helpful hints and tips on how to draw your water drop character, which you're gonna use for an activity um, tomorrow and Monday. So first of all, the water cycle. This is a very simplified drawing. So we know the water cycle is all about the water. Okay, so think about it raining. We had some serious thunderstorms um, a couple days ago. And think about the precipitation. That's the scientific word for rain. Um, precipitation can be rain or snow or ice, like hail. So precipitation, sure, surely, is one part of the water cycle. So rain comes down onto the earth. Um, it can hit the ocean, become part of the ocean. Um, around our homes, there's puddles that form. And we know throughout the day, those puddles, they dry up. And, you know, the more rain you get and the larger those puddles are, the longer it may take for those puddles to disappear and to dry up. But we know that eventually the puddles do. And they don't actually um, disappear. This water turns into water vapor, which is invisible to us in the atmosphere and the air. But this whole process, and you know this because of your notes, is driven by the heat of the sun. Okay, so the sun hits the puddle, those water droplets, um, it's the state of matter, the water, of course, but the speed of those molecules, those water particles, they speed up until they become water vapor. So they're turning from a liquid into a gas, and this is called evaporation. So when this happens, the liquid, the water, turns into a gas, and we call that water vapor. And then up here in the atmosphere becomes part of the atmosphere. And up here in the atmosphere, um, they can turn into clouds. And that's called condensation. Condensation. My word's not going to fit in my cloud. All right, but condensation is a change of state. And we've learned about this before. All this is pretty much review. This is a change of state from water vapor into water. Okay, so a gas into a liquid. And for clouds to form, you may not know this, but for clouds to form, that water vapor has to condense on a dust particle. Okay, so it condenses on a dust particle and the clouds form. And when enough condensation happens, those, those clouds fill with water and they can rain again. Okay, so that's a very simplified uh, water cycle. It rains, precipitation, the water evaporates into a gas, condense, condenses back into a liquid molecule, and the whole process is driven by the sun. Okay, and we know that a few other things happen too because of your notes that you just took. Um, but if we want to very quickly just go through some of these steps more in depth, just so you have these notes, and you can incorporate this information into that comic strip that's your next activity tomorrow and Monday. More information about that tomorrow. All right, so the water cycle step for evaporation. Okay, so that's one step of the water cycle. So evaporation, that's a liquid turning to a gas. The molecule movement, those molecules speed up. Okay, we know that solids, the forces holding those solids together like ice, um, snow, Okay, so we find those in the water cycle as well. Um, the, the forces that hold a solid together are so strong, all those particles can do are vi vibrate in place. Then when heat is added, there's melting. Okay, the solid melts into a liquid. The molecules speed up. We know they can slide. We talked about that. There's more space between the molecules. And then finally, evaporation is liquid into a gas. The gas molecules move the quickest. So during evaporation, the speed of the molecules, they speed up. They're going faster. There's more space between those molecules. And the state of matter change is a liquid 
to a gas. So if you want to add this chart to your notes, that may be a really good idea. Okay, so the next step is condensation. And we talked about that, the formation of the clouds. So condensation, it's a gas turning back into a liquid. So we know the gas molecules move the quickest. Liquid, there's more forces, stronger forces holding them together than a gas. That's why they can only slide. So we know they slow down. The speed of the molecules slow down as they turn from a gas to a liquid. Okay, we can think about ice freezing. Okay, especially in those colder climates. Ice freezing, the formation of snow. Okay, we know that ice freezing, that's a liquid to a solid. Okay, so those molecules slow down and ice freezing, think about making ice cubes in your freezer. You start with a liquid and then a couple hours later, you end up with a solid. All right, it's really interesting also, we can also see sublimation. Okay, sublimation in the water cycle. So sublimation, if you remember, we talked about this. Sublimation is a state of matter change from a solid directly to a gas. It bypasses that liquid phase. Think about dry ice. Okay, that's CO2 in the solid form. And it looks like it's smoking, that white smoke. But that's turning from a solid to a gas. So if it's very icy, we didn't have a lot of snow and ice this winter. But if we did, and think about the glaciers, glaciers in the Arctic regions. So they're big blocks of ice. That ice can turn from a solid directly into water vapor. And when that happens, that's called sublimation. Snow can do that. Ice can do that. So it's neat to bring that in a little bit here. Okay, and of course, if it's going from a solid to a gas, those molecules are really speeding up. Those molecules speed up during that process. So the last thing you'll do is make a little water droplet character. You're gonna make a little water droplet character. And if you have an index card, okay, if you have an index card, this is one, um, that'd be a perfect size. Now my index cards are a little larger um, than the typical, you know, common index cards that you would have. If that's the case, I would um, not use the entire space for it because what you're going to be doing tomorrow and working on Monday as well, you have two days to do this, you're working on a comic strip and you want to incorporate, you're making and incorporating your character and glue your character, you're going to glue it down somewhere in your comic strips. And your comic strip, the paper you're using is either a piece of printer paper or loose leaf. So you don't want your character to be so big, All right? So on slide number 16, in the water cycle notes slideshow, there's the directions how to do this. And my um, index card is a little bigger than normal, so I'm just gonna use half my size. All right, and there's different options for you on that slide 16. What you wanna do is make a character for your comic strip. And you wanna add a face to it. It's about the water cycle. So it can be a water droplet. And there's a couple ideas for you on that slide number 16. It could be a water droplet. Um, it could be a water molecule. So water is H2O. So it can be a water molecule. And there's a picture of that on slide 16 as well. The O atom is bigger than the H atoms, but that's H2O. There's two H's and one O. Maybe this could be his face, and these could be his arms. So you could be a little bit more scientific about the water and draw it a more scientific, um, more chemical atomic way. Or you can just very simply make a water droplet, and you want to add a face. Right, so this uh, comic strip you're making, and I'll give you directions tomorrow, um, you want your character to inspire your comic strip. And what your character is doing is going through the water cycle. Okay, so pretend, imagining it's you, you're evaporating and then condensing and then, run, and then raining and the rain is running off the mountain and it's building up in the river and you could evaporate again or maybe it can be frozen as ice. So your water droplet's going to be doing different things depending on um, your story. Okay, and more about that tomorrow. But what you want to do is design your character today, all right, because that's one of the 
um, assignments. So using those faces on slide 16, those options, and maybe your face can be how you feel like right now, okay? Maybe you're sad you're not seeing all your friends at school. Maybe you're happy because you're back in school and session and you're learning again. So think about how you feel right now. You can have that inspire your water droplet character. But you want to add a face. I'm just doing this very quickly. Um, mine looks a little devilish, okay? Like he's going to get in trouble somehow. Um, maybe add some ears. Um, add some arms if you wish. Okay, it might be kind of funny thinking about your water molecule having arms and legs. Okay, but you want to humanize your water droplet a little bit. Okay, you want to humanize him because he's going to have adventures in your water cycle comic strip. He's going to evaporate. He's going to condense, become a cloud. Maybe he's going to hail down little bits of ice as hail um, coming down back to earth. Maybe he's going to percolate into the ground. Maybe the, um, the roots of a plant are going to suck him up and he's going to transpire through the plant and turn back into water vapor. So you see how the options are endless. The options are endless for your water droplet character. Finally, you want to cut your water droplet out. And I'm not going to cut the whole thing out. Maybe I will. Okay. But you want to cut them out close to the arms. You just don't want a lot of white space because when you make your comic strip, Okay, you're going to glue him right onto your comic strip. One of your assignments today is to um, attach your notes, so I know you did them. Okay, so you're attaching your notes. Um, and then your second assignment is to draw and cut out your water droplet character. You're going to take a picture of it, and you're going to keep, them in a safe, keep it in a safe spot for tomorrow. Because you're going to let your character inspire um, the adventures you write for it in your comic strip. And then tomorrow, Monday, before you turn in your final, um, your final product for your comic strip, you're going to glue him down somewhere on your comic strip. Okay, so I, I can read his, the story of your water droplet. I can see what your water droplet looks like. You're going to glue them down. So you just don't want it too big. You don't want it too small, okay? Um, give, give it a face. You can give it a name. You could be wearing clothes. It's really up to you, all right? So your assignment is to turn in your completed notes, draw, color, cut out your water droplet character. Um, those two things you're turning in um, for the assignments today, and you're keeping your character for your comic strip um, that will be due on Monday. All right, I hope everyone is doing well, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.